In 2008, we spent three weeks at the Nami Brant Nature Reserve in Namibia setting up experiments for testing hypotheses of the causes of fairy circles. Fairy circles are gaps in an otherwise continuous grassland. This is a satellite image with a wheel track for scale. The causes of these circles have stimulated a great deal of scientific and public interest with a profusion of suggestions from many quarters. The Namibran Nature Reserve is a six-hour drive from Windhoek, the capital of Namibia. Most of the route is on graded dirt roads such as this. We rented a wonderful farmhouse. Our field site was seven miles away on sand tracks leading to a prominent peak, the Jakob. The track passes by one fairy circle after another. The deep red, wind-blown sands of the Namib Desert form this plain and inundate, inundate some of the lower hills. The grassland is composed of two dominant species of Bushman grass, a short one forming the matrix and a tall one around the perimeter of the fairy circles. The desert is green only for short periods after rare summer rains that drift in from the Indian Ocean and drop their last moisture over this region. The region is home to several large grazers, zebra, oryx, antelope, ostrich, springbok, and hartebeest. Seen in the early morning light, the perimeter of taller grass is clearly visible as is the bareness of the circles and the grassiness of the matrix. The desert quickly turns green after substantial rains, but the circles remain bare. Note the wheel tracks for scale. Whoever. Um, um, what we've done here is to set up a series of experiments. Uh, there are four of them sited at the same place and uh, they test several different hypotheses about what forms these fairy circles that we're standing in. The first question we tested is, is the soil in fairy circles inhibitory to grass germination and growth? The soil transfer experiment tests whether the soil of fairy circles inhibits the growth of grasses by moving soil between natural and artificial fairy circles. That's 10. Okay, it's 9 and 10. So, <laughs> this experiment, we are moving soil from natural circles to these artificial ones. These artificial ones, and those are 6 meters diameter, they're bigger. And we're moving soil from the artificial circles to natural circles, and from natural to natural as a control, and from artificial to artificial as the other control. So two controls, two treatments. If the soil in the fairy circles is inhibitory to germination of plants and growth of plants, then moving matrix soil to the circle should result in reduced growth. The one that we're standing in right now is one in which we've transferred soil from fairy circles to artificial circles that we've made by pulling up the grass and uh, so that if there if there's something inhibitory in the um, fairy circle soil then it should reduce growth in the artificial circles and if we transfer artificial circle soil to fairy circles and the fairy circles are inhibitory then that should also reduce growth and then we also do controls where we it from like to like. Uh, so now um, Elton is going to explain the same thing more or less in uh, Nama language. Uh, 
ini masa tuh di mana nih masa ini sih kayak ini sih arban di satu di mana sih kru meja cum di mana sih kayak di sana national yang kau nafsu nak cari nafsu yang kau ni nak cari cuma aku kosa mas kamu sih kau ni sih nafsu nak kru ke kau ni nafsu nak kru cina aku bukan tangkap aku kosa ni sih nafsu nak ni kru meja nafsu nak ni kru meja cum di cum di mana tuh aku cuma kosa di satu di mana sih Okay. Hang on. We monitored this experiment for over five years. All replicates were the same, so I'm only presenting one of them here. This experiment failed to support an inhibitory effect of fairy circle soil. Circles remained bare and matrix circles filled in, as you see in this image. Here, former matrix circles are shown as ellipses. Both fairy circles remain bare. The second question was, is the soil in fairy circles depleted in micronutrients, thereby failing to support plant growth? We're testing the hypothesis that these uh, fairy circles are depleted in trace elements. So it's a very simple experiment. All we've done is to uh, make a mixture of the major trace elements and we've watered one set of plots with the trace elements and the other one we just watered with plain uh, water. So if micronutrients are depleted, then the, the, the water micronutrient treated plots should grow grass. Uh, now there's a little wrinkle here because the, um, the berry circles are very depleted in, in grass seeds. The, the wind blows them away, they don't stay. So what we did was to collect grass seeds from the matrix around here and sprinkle the grass seed on the uh, plot before we watered it with either the control or the, the treatment. Uh, Tanda bahang, kom na uti ni bahang, kacung na bahu, na bahu haban ngau sa, tu sa, cium jen ni bahang haban ngau semua cie, net las, na kom na net bahu cerut cium bahu ye, bahu ya, hang hang kau kah kah, ikut muka, nasi, an aku an kom, an nasi ni bahas, si si orang wadi sa, an kum jen ni bahang tu je di, pas kia pas kia tangan ni bahas ni bahu itu sa, so ngai tu ni bahang itu. Simplest outcome would be that these things burst into grass and everything grows when you add micronutrients and then everything else is obvious, right? <laughs> yeah. We monitored the micronutrient treatments for over five years. All replicates were alike, so I'm showing only four of the 12 replicates. Even after abundant rains, the circles receiving micronutrients did not fill in. We conclude that fairy circles do not form as a result of micronutrient depletion. The third question we tested was, does a toxic vapor emanating from below prevent plant growth in fairy circles? So in, this, so in this particular uh, experiment, there is a theory that uh, the fairy circles are caused by some kind of a vapor or toxic material coming up from below ground and killing the grass. So what we've done here is we've dug a hole marked by the four stones and we've lined it with an impervious tarp uh, so that the vapors can't get through. Of course that also restricts the movement of water down but we'll sort that out later. So if, there's a, if vapors are coming up from below and killing the plants, then the in this in this particular experiment, the plants should grow because we've blocked the vapors. We also did a control in which we just dug up the soil. Plastic, 
Ama kurang oh ha. Potong sih bah. Kay indah pelan dah tapi kan orang orang kamu sendiri banyak. Aku kacung sih. Cung je kau kawan kau baru kau kau. Nanti ni aku ni aku ya. Kau baru kau kisah. Cung je naskah. Ni bani di atas kau cung kau lagi plastik macam. So nanti naskah ni kay. In in ni aku nak dah kau dah ikut kau. Ni bani pelan dah kau dah ikut. As in other experiments, we monitored the two replicates of the barrier experiment for over five years. Barriers are on the right, controls on the left. Five years later, no plants had grown over the vapor barrier, whose outline is shown by the rectangle. The toxic vapor hypothesis was thus not supported. Question four was, given the regular spacing of fairy circles, is there any kind of interaction among them that might be detectable in plant growth and that would be related to circle distance and size? If a fairy circle influences plant growth in its neighborhood, we should see differences among artificial circles of various sizes and distances. That's two meters from this one, and um, that is a two meter circle, that's six meters from this one, and over there, here, mm -hmm. that is a two meter circle that's two meters from this one, and finally, this is a uh, four meter circle that's six meters from the center one. No, now, if, if there is an interaction among neighboring then the vegetation that grows in these different sizes and distances should be different. It's kind of a long shot experiment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure I expect much from it, but it's something that had to be done. So the treatments are, are simple. We just simply pulled up all the grasses on these artificial circles. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then the monitoring will be, well, there, there are two dependent measures that we're looking for. Germination in general, and the species that germinate. And secondly, whether the grass around the perimeter is taller than the grass in the circle. So, and that could be because different species do well there, you know, the tall bushman grass, or it could be because there's more water, or maybe the two are the same thing. Yeah. So that's the one experiment. We monitored these experiments for over five years as well. All replicates showed the same outcome, so only one is presented here. Size and distance of the artificial circles from the real circles had no effect. All artificial circles filled in after the abundant rains of 2011. Here the original artificial circles are shown as ellipses. None of them became real circles or showed differences in vegetation. Altogether, these experiments have failed to support several popular hypotheses. Fairy circle soil is not inhibitory, no toxic vapors emanate from below, and micronutrient depletion does not play a role in formation. In addition, natural fairy circles have little local influence on grass growth in artificial circles nearby.